dedicate this to my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Today I'm going to be fixing some Nintendo 64 controllers. I actually have two cranky ones, which is these two. And then one, one good one that doesn't need fixing. And one Brawler 64, which I've done a review of. You can check the Brawler 64 review down below. So we're going to be fixing these two today. Give them a little clean up and maybe replace the joysticks. Okay, so before we go into this video, let's go through all the tools I have. I have a Mako Precision Bit Set from MyFixit.com with all the little screwdriver heads and everything you need to open everything up. I've got a cotton bag of cotton swabs. I've got a magnetic fix mat so we can put the screws on and we can't lose them because they'll stay magnetic to the fixing mat. I've got a bottle of isopropyl alcohol, 99% for cleaning. I've got a standard uh, toothbrush for getting around the grooves and cleaning things up. I've got some blue lithium grease to put on the, the new gears and uh, joystick at the bottom so that it doesn't grind for, for future prep. And I've also got a bag of the, of the N64 gears here and bowls and joysticks and some hot water, some warm water, some yellow rubber gloves and for the cleaning part we'll be using a dishmatic uh, cleaning sponger. I marked up my magnetic mat with the grey N64 controller screws and the black N64 controller screws. I'm going to be using a Phillips head uh, one, uh, level one of my iFixit driver. I'm just going to go and take the screws out from the back. The nine screws on the back, you've got one there, two, three, four, five, six, and seven's over here. Excuse the shadows. Seven is over there. Eight and nine is by the rumble pack. So first screw is out, this is the grey controller screw, put it on the magnetic mat. Second screw out, put it on the magnetic mat. third screw out, put it on the magnetic mat. The two screws that go down by the rumble pack, I'm using a Phillips 0, zero screwdriver. It's so after putting those screws back on the magnetic board, we're going to go for the moment of truth now, as we're going to open it up and have a look in here. So, on this, this one here, this side, the left hand side, where the Z button is, you can ping back and take this and slip this out. But on the other side, you won't be able to do it because it's fixed. So do not touch this side here. If you touch this side here, you can snap it. But this one you can move. So you just move that and sort of bring it out like that. And then set the pieces aside again onto the magnetic board. Same with these, you're just going to push this aside, clip this out, be careful with it. That's it, it's out. So the next part is we're going to remove these three screws here, one here, one here, and one here and take the joystick component out. Okay, so after you've got this joystick component unscrewed with the three screws, you're just gonna wiggle these wires out. Okay, just for, for getting these out, it may be a wise idea to get a spudger to help you just get into the groove of this because I've been tugging at the cable and I don't wanna rip these cables. I've also been using my long fingernails take that out just be careful because if you break this if you 
tug on these cables too hard, you could rip these cables out of this part here, and then you'll 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 be you'll be effed basically. Okay, so after removing the cable from the from the top of the controller, making it allowing it to be loose, we we'll bring this over, and I'm just going to set the motherboard aside just over there. It's going to take all the parts of the inside of the controller and then set them aside. So you've got the D-pad and and the C buttons as well. Same for this controller, remove the cable from the top so that you can loosen the motherboard and release it. And for some reason that I can't get the joystick to disconnect, but I've just left it connected for the time being. We can work without it. Again the same process, move all these aside as well. And then we're gonna give these these shells all a great good clean on the inside and the outside with some soap. Okay, so for this part we're gonna be using the cotton swabs and uh, some of the isopropyl alcohol just to clean up the screws and all of the little membrane bits around the buttons just give them a clean for any dust and dirt and grime might actually use the toothbrush for this as well actually because these things are quite filthy Lots of grime and dirt on there. All around the D-pad. Getting the grooves with the toothbrush, give it a good scrub. Okay, so I've got my hot water ready, nice and warm. And I'm gonna be cleaning the shells of the controllers using the dishmatic sponger and also using a toothbrush to go around the grooves just getting this and going around the grooves here where all the skin residue builds up same with this one as well around the edges with isopropyl alcohol. The on the controller is quite common that this little part here breaks to hold the cable so just be careful you don't knock that. It may already be broken, it's quite common that it's already broken. It's usually it's usually dropping it is the damage that breaks it. Just snaps in half. Whoops, got to take this out. Okay, so I'm going to go into the joystick now. There is basically one screw left that we need to go to unscrew, and then you're going to slowly take it out. And it's this black, just this little black one here. And then we're going to pull it off and have a look at it. If you don't have any grease on these, it is inevitable that the joystick is just going to grind to the bowl at the bottom and slowly start to grind it down and just basically erode the joystick and bowl and uh, that's how you get the loose joysticks or the cranky joysticks without any grease there it's just inevitable that that's what's going to happen so we're going to clean it up perhaps change the bowl and the joystick and put some new grease down to stop it from grinding and then reconnect the controllers this is the moment of truth So 
so just to take the back off you're just going to peel these little bits back the two the two grey parts you can see here see and now we are in so there yeah you guys should be able to see some of the residue and that in there we're going to take this out I'm going to put a new bowl in and I'm going to put some grease at the bottom just remember how all the gears and everything on this go back because it is common to put them on the wrong way and then not be able to fix the controller back properly because they're not put on the right way so you're going to get the joystick twist it sideways and then it will just pop out like that to get the joystick out you just push it from here out and it comes out straight like that you can see all that horrible gunk inside there everything that's been basically the joystick grinding down onto this bowl endlessly I'm going to put a new bowl in I may just run with the joystick that I have because the joystick itself doesn't look too bad I could put some new grease in it and then just put put a new bowl in now to get these little gear parts out you're just going to pull this aside like that and then just slowly slip it out like that just kick it sort of flick it out and it'll come out that's it got it okay so I've got some new bowls out and some and some new gears and new joysticks as well and I have inspected both of the joysticks together, the original and a new one, and it you can see that they are there is a slight difference. The old one is the lighter one out of the two. If you look very carefully, you can see there's a slight difference in how much is on each one. So this is the, the original and it is slightly worn, it is slightly lessened. I'm worn out so I am going to replace the joystick and the bowl uh, might as well do the gears as well then while I'm here I know that you can get these bowls and joysticks via Kitchbent uh, is a one of the websites you can get them but you can also get them from eBay I got mine from a guy from eBay I'll plug the link for it was Retro Roy I got them from on eBay I'll plug the link for him below I'm just gonna put the new bowls and the gears in and then we'll have it we'll test out the controller okay so i got these two little bits back on you can see them spinning and i'm going to put this in and the joystick as well so i will be putting some of the blue lithium grease inside just to avoid that happening again a very nice amount of this and just with a cotton swab you're just going to put it in the middle and put a little bit more just to ensure that where the joystick's going to be running and rolling and rocking that, that whole part of the bowl is going to cover it there you go so you can see I've put a generous amount in there okay so this part's a little bit tricky to get right and it's easy to get the wrong way around so I'm just going to show you with a new gear that I've got hot here in my hand you can see there's there's this on one side and then the other side is just like a stumpy part whereas the other side's got like a sort of a hook so the hook side on the left hand side is going to go here and then the hook side on the bottom is going to go on the bottom for the for the other one so you're going to have a one hook side here and one hook side down here and then the stumps either side here if you can see that and I've also put a little bit of more blue lithium grease in the middle there blue lithium grease on the end of the joystick as well okay so if you look carefully on the inside of the, of the bowl the long longer bigger part goes at the bottom these two these two pieces, the gears, they're actually one's bigger than the other. One's smaller and one's one's bigger. So one's got a thinner part in the middle 
and the other one's got a fatter part. So the one that's longer, the fatter part in the middle, goes long ways along the bottom. So you can see here, if you look very carefully. And then, this one is going to go in the top part here, but like this. Okay, so this is really the most difficult part, is putting these parts back together. If you look very carefully at, this, at the spring, you'll be able to see that there's a slight sort of tornado shape about it where the bottom is thin like at the bottom of a tornado and the top it gets bigger so the big part goes on the top and the small thin part at the bottom and it's just going to go in there like that i'm going to place this the uh, little washer on the top if you look carefully at the washer, there's like a ridge around this, the edge of it. You can see, I'm not sure if you can see, there's a slight ridge. The ridge goes like that and tucks in on the spring. What we're going to do is we're going to take this small one that I've got in my hand. We're going to turn the joystick round upright like this. And then you're going to clip it's very hard for me to do this whilst holding the camera so, okay so if you look carefully I've, I've basically placed the gear and the joystick like this ready to basically place it inside the centerpiece now the reason why this part of the joystick has got to be long ways like this is because if you look you can see in the in the gear inside it's long ways so this is long ways so that when this comes in it's going to fit into that part of the gear there like that and then the this gear is straight straight ways and then i'm just going to go and place it in like i need another hand to help with this so but you can see it's starting to go in if it doesn't go in properly what will happen is the joystick will be slanted like this okay i just want to show you guys if you put it back wrong the wrong way around this is what it will do the joystick will slot will slope to one side like this if you put it the wrong way so be careful just putting everything in there you can see these two bits here be careful them clipping in now that's that's in the joystick's gone in straight it's not slanted it seems to be moving about all right you're going to hold this together with two hands and then you're going to get and screw the screw in this part here okay so you've got your three gold joystick screws one two three right at the bottom and then the little black one the little black joystick screw is going to go in here in this little slot here just something to think about when you're putting the buttons back into the controller basically on each button you will see like a, like these grooves or bits that stick out so I'm going to show you so for example on the d-pad there's this little groove just on the edge here. if you look very carefully you can see the little groove just here the, where the groove is that groove there so the groove is going to go on there and you can see that there's a little bit sticking out that fits the groove so you're going to notice when you put them in that the little bits that stick out or the grooves that come out they won't fit in the right way and because each part's got like a groove or a bit that sticks out and you, so just to make sure that the buttons go in the same place you'll notice as well because if you turn around the controller and for example if you put the c buttons in wrong the arrows on the c buttons are all going to be facing the other way this is just a heads up just takes a little bit of fiddling around to learn where each part goes in the right place you have to undo the controller a few times if you make this mistake it is quite common also you want to make sure that these membranes go on the right way these pressy button things go around this way some of them are the other way around you've got to remember when you open the controller up which way something was always make a mental note it's probably a good idea to take a photo of the controller when you've opened it up you know so you can see where everything is just so that for reference when you come back you know it's going to screw in like that make sure it's all placed in properly and screw it in just something i want to mention when you're putting everything back together 
you will notice all these sort of little holes, these little grooves here, like grooves here. If you look for the grooves and the bits that stick out, you'll be able to see where everything fits in perfectly. Just keep an eye out and it will it'll make things easier for you. Push that cable back through, just round these little things here. That's it, push it in. Just round here like this. Like that. Everything lines up, make sure the buttons are all lined up. The buttons look lined up this side. Except that the C button on there is the wrong way around, see? So now you just gotta check these things before you put it back together, so I'm gonna have to undo it and turn the C button around. Okay, so just some things to remember when you're putting the controller back together, so the L and the R buttons are going to go in the bottom shell. There's the two little holes here, one there and one there, and you're going to put you're going to put the, the button because it's got a little sort of bit to to slot it in. Just going to fit that in like that, and then you got the the R button. You're going to fit that in like that, and then the top. And then this part of the controller, you're going to do it this way around, but make sure that the buttons are all are all in place first. I've lined up the L and the R buttons and all the other buttons and everything inside. Everything's all ready. And then I'm just going to clip this over the top. rumble pack's a good sort of guide to see how online you are, you are with it. Get one screw and screw one in and then you'll be halfway there. When you're putting the shells back together you'll usually hear a clicking. This is a sign that everything's been put back together. If you hear it all click into place and everything's sort of in alignment and it clicks and it makes a little clicking can't seem to do it at the moment but yeah it did make a clicking and a popping sound if it clicks and makes a popping sound and then everything sort of seems in lined up and in place and the buttons don't seem stiff then you know you've put it in the right you put it in the right way round put everything in the right order so don't forget the rumble screws down here as well what happens is once you've clipped everything together sort of as, or got it in as line alignment as much as you can make sure that the buttons are the shoulder buttons are in as best they can be what happens is as you start to screw each screw in the controller will start to take shape just remember to make sure that the buttons on the on the face are in alignment obviously the a and the b buttons and the c buttons aren't pointing the wrong way you haven't put them in the wrong way as providing everything's all put put in the right way it will slowly start to come together each screw that you screw in will just tighten it and then it will just line up here we have the final result of the two controllers as you can see squeaky clean all the buttons working properly squeaky clean good as new no more gunk around the edges buttons and joysticks are all nice see the, there's no crankiness with the joysticks and that now ready to go it's me Mario hello Okay, okay.